Magandang araw mga bata! Welcome to Teacher Marles Channel kung saan maraming matututunan sa lesson na ating pag-aaralan. Our subject is Science 6 and I am Sir Mar. Okay children, so let us take a look at this picture. So I have here a Z-source, can opener, axe, copy grinder, wheelbarrow, and the pliers. So what did you notice in these pictures? Very good! These are all examples of simple machines. Today, we are going to talk about the simple machines. So simple machines can be seen in school, factories, clinics, laboratories, hospitals, cars, ships, and airplanes. First, let us define what is simple machines. So simple machines require human energy in order to work. A machine makes our work easier implies that we need less force to do the same amount of work. Simple machines are simple tools that multiply the amount of force to make work easier. So one of the example of simple machine is a copy grinder. For us to have a cup of coffee, we need to process or grind the coffee beans. So from the coffee beans to a coffee grinder, then the product of that will be boiled to make a cup of coffee. Okay, so let us take a look to another example. What do you use when you want to cut something? Yes, a scissor. So we use scissors to cut something just like this illustration. Machines are used to transform or transfer energy, multiply speed or force. Machines also can be classified as simple machine and compound or complex machines. Okay, so a compound machine consists of two or more simple machines. For example, so we have bicycles and sewing machines. A bicycle and sewing machine are compound machines that uses a variety of simple machines. Brake handles on a bicycle are levers, and a screw connects the handlebars with a front wheel for steering. So that's why a bicycle and the sewing machine is an example of compound machines because it consists of two or more simple machines. Okay, children, so we already discussed what is a simple machine and a compound machines. Let us now proceed with the kinds of simple machines. So, first is we have lever. Let us find out what is a lever. Lever, the examples of levers are seesaw, crowbars, tweezers, and pliers. Now, let us define what is a lever. The lever is made up of a straight rigid object like a board or a bar which pivots on a turning point called a fulcrum. Levers make work easier by using leverage which multiplies the force. Okay, by this time, let us identify the different parts of a lever. So, number one, we have load, resistance arm, effort, Airport arm and the fulcrum. So these are all the parts of a lever. By this time, let us define the meaning of the different parts of a lever. Number one, we have resistance. So this is the resistance or load. And when we say resistance or load, it is a force that is being lifted by the airport. Next. Effort. So this is the effort. And when we say effort, it is a force that lifts the resistance. Next is the fulcrum. So the fulcrum, this is the fulcrum. And this is the point on which the lever rests or is supported and on which it pivots. Next is we have the resistant arm. So this is the resistant arm and this 
is the distance of the resistance to the fulcrum. Next, we have effort arm. So, the effort arm, this is the effort arm. So, when we say effort arm, this is the distance of the effort to the fulcrum. So, next, we have the classes of levers. So, the three classes of levers vary in different placement of the effort. Load or also called as the resistance and the fulcrum along the bar. So, first class lever we have the fulcrum is between the effort and the load as in a CISO. So, let us see the illustration below. So, number one we have load, effort, and the fulcrum. So, this is an illustration of a first class lever. Now, let us look for an example. We have the load, effort, and the fulcrum. Another example is we have scissors. We have load, fulcrum, and the effort. Next is a second class lever. The fulcrum lies at one end and the effort is applied at the other end. And the load is in the middle as in a wheelbarrow. So let us see the illustration below. So we have the load at the middle, the effort at the other end, and the fulcrum at the one end. So let us look for an example of the second class lever. So we have a wheelbarrow. Number one, we have effort. Number two is the load. Three is the fulcrum. Okay, so let us try to answer this. So this is a paper cutter. So a paper cutter is an example of a second class lever. Now let us identify where is the load, the effort, and the fulcrum in this picture. So we have the load, the effort, and the fulcrum. Okay, very good. So let us proceed with the third class lever. The fulcrum is at one end, but the load is at the other end, and the effort is applied in the middle as in a human forearm. So one of the examples of the third class level is our forearm. So let us see the illustration below. So we have number one, we have load. Number two is the effort. And number three, the fulcrum. So this is the illustration of a third class lever. Now let us look for an example. So number one, we have load. Number two, we have effort and a fulcrum. Then another example, we have load, effort, and fulcrum. Okay, children, so let us try to answer this. So we have here a tweezers. Let us identify where is the fulcrum, the effort, and the load in this image. Okay, so number one, we have load. Very good. Next, what is this? Effort. Very good. The last one, we have Fulcrum. Very good. Okay, so now you already know the different parts of a lever and its classification. So let us always remember that the lever is made up of a straight rigid object like a board or a bar which revolves on a turning point called a fulcrum. Levers make work easier by using leverage which multiplies the force. Resistance or load, a force that is being lifted by the effort. Effort is a force that lifts the resistance. Fulcrum, the point on which the lever rests or is supported and on which it pivots. Resistant arm, the distance of the resistance to the fulcrum. Effort arm, the distance of the effort to the fulcrum. 
So there are three classes of levers vary in the placement of the effort, load, and the fulcrum along the bar. So number one, we have first class lever. The fulcrum is between the effort and the load as in a seesaw. Second class lever, the fulcrum lies at one end, the effort is applied at the other end, and the load is in the middle. The third class lever, the fulcrum is at one end, but the load is at the other end, and the effort is applied in the middle. Okay, children. So, by this time, let us now proceed with the inclined plane. An inclined plane is also another kind of simple machines. The inclined plane is a simple machine that has a sloping surface. It lessens the effort exerted in transporting weight over a distance and height. For example, we have skateboards, wheelchair ramps, slides, stairs, and the escalators. So an inclined plane is a simple machine that helps us move heavy objects by pushing or rolling them up at an angle rather than lifting them straight up. So the skateboards, wheelchair ramps, slides, and stairs as well as escalators are all examples of an inclined plane. The inclined plane has been used by prehistoric times to move heavy objects. Romans used inclined plane for moving heavy things uphill. So the heavy stones used in creating ancient structures such as Stonehenge are believed to have been moved and set in place using an inclined plane. An inclined plane is a flat supporting surface tilted at an angle with one end higher than the other. So let us see an example. An inclined plane is a simple machine that helps us move heavy objects by pushing or rolling them up at an angle rather than lifting them straight up. So examples are the wheelchair ramps. So as you can see, there is an inclined plane in the ramps. And then we have stairs. We also see an inclined plane and the slides as well as the escalator. Okay, children, as we said a while ago that inclined plane helps us move heavy objects by pushing or rolling them up at an angle rather than lifting them straight up. So in this illustration, which is the example of an inclined plane, is it letter A or letter B? Okay. So, the correct answer is letter B. Now, by this time, let us go back to the different examples and uses of an inclined plane. The inclined plane is used to load and unload goods. So, let us look at this illustration. Another example is we have wheelchair ramps slides, escalator, loading and unloading of goods, and the stairs. And let us always remember when we talk about an inclined plane, it is a simple machine that helps us move heavy objects by pushing or rolling them up at an angle rather than lifting them straight up. So, okay now, let us explore more simple machines with this lesson. Okay, children, by this time, we are going to study all about wedge. So, wedge is a simple machine that consists of two inclined planes, giving it a thin end and a thick end. It is used to cut, split, tighten, hold back, and scrapping objects. Let us look for an illustration of a wedge. So our example is an axe. Some people might see the wedge as just an inclined plane. Although it is actually two inclined planes, however, the use of a wedge is actually different in nature. 
because the wedge is used to separate an object apart. So let us see some more examples of a wedge. So we have axe, needle, knife, chisel, and a staple. This time, let us go deeper with wedge as we identify each example why they belong to a simple machine called wedge. So the wedge is used to separate an object apart. This is needed to cut, to tear or break something into two. One of the example of this is a kitchen knife. A kitchen knife is a wedge. The blade of the knife comes to a sharp edge that can easily cut through all kinds of food. So let us see another example. An axe is a wedge with a handle. The axe helps make splitting apart the tree stump much easier than doing it by hand. It becomes wedge because it consists of two inclined planes. Due to the wedge shape, the tree stump breaks apart. A wedge can also be used to keep things together or secure things from movement. One of the examples of this is a nail. As you can see in the illustration, nails are examples of wedge used to concentrate the force of the hammer. This way, the nail drives deep into a wooden object with a little effort to keep things together or secure things from the movement. So, okay. By this time, children, let us identify the examples of wedge used for separating things and used for securing or holding things together. These are the examples of wedge that are used for separating things. We have scissors, shovel, knife, and an axe. But wedges can also hold things together. Let us see the following examples. So we have nails, pushpins, staples, and a thumb tax. So these are the examples of wedges that are used for separating things. Always remember, a wedge is a simple machine that consists of two inclined planes, giving it a thin end and thick end. There are wedge used to separate things and there are wedge used to hold things together. I think you already know what is wedge. Let us now proceed with another simple machines. So today, we are going to talk about screw. A screw is really a twisted inclined plane. It allows movement from a lower position to a higher position, but at the same time, it moves in a circle that makes it take up less horizontal space. Just like the following example, a screw can also act to hold things together in some cases. So example for this is a light bulb to its socket. Okay, now children, let us proceed with the parts of a screw. So screw has a parts. Number one, we have shop, thread, pitch, and the last one is the tip. So these are the parts of a screw. So let us proceed. Okay, children, by this time, let us study the uses of a screw. Some examples of the uses of screw are in a jar lid, a bolt, a light bulb, faucets, bottle caps, ballpoint pens, and a drill. So these are the uses of a screw. So many screws are used to hold things together, such as two pieces of wood or a screw cap and bottle. When you use a screw, you apply force to turn the inclined plane. A screw can convert a force that goes around and around into a force that goes up and down. Screw are generally used to hold things together, but a larger forms of screw can be used for lifting. Screw can thread into things like wood or a metal bolt so that the two things are interlocked and cannot come apart. Okay, now children. 
that you already know what is a screw and its uses, let us now proceed with another simple machine. By this time, children, let us explore and learn what is a wheel and axle. Okay, children, the wheel itself is not a machine. It becomes a machine when it combines with an axle. The axle is a bar or shaft on both ends of which two wheels are fastened so that they turn together. So now, let us study the different parts of a wheel and axle. So parts of a wheel and axle, number one, we have the left wheel, the axle, and the right wheel. The wheel has been always considered a major invention in the history of mankind, but it really would not work well if it's not been for the axle. So gears are from the wheel and axle. So an axle is a rod or pole centered in the wheel that allows the wheel to turn around it. So we have the wheel and axle. The wheel then in spins in a balanced circle to be used as a transportation on a bike or to turn the hands of a clock. Now, let us see another illustration of a wheel and axle. A wheel and axle is consists of two circular pieces of different sizes attached to each other. Let us see an illustration. So the larger circular piece is the wheel in the system and the smaller is the axle. One circular piece can be the effort arm of the lever of the system and the second is the resistance arm. And the place at which the two are joined is called the fulcrum. Now, let us see examples of wheel and axle. So wheels are found where things turn in a circle, such as an electric fan, a bike, a revolving door, a merry-go-round, and any wheel. So, great children! Let us always remember that wheels and axles go together to form a simple machine that can be useful to human beings. By this time, let us take a look to another simple machine. So let us study what is a pulley as well as its uses. So the pulley is actually a version of a wheel and axle that is combined with a rope, chain, or another cord to allow moving something up and down or back and forth as you can see in the illustration. A pulley is a wheel that carries a flexible rope, cord, or belt on its rim. It is made of a wheel and a rope, pulleys with groove, rims, or cold shims. So these are the examples of a pulley. Parts of a pulley. So number one, we have rope. Number two, we have the pulley. And number three, we have the load. Okay, so it can also move something such as plug to the pole. It is very convenient to do from the ground. It changes the direction of the force necessary to do the work. And it pulls down on the rope, but the plug goes up. So children, the pulley can be combined with other pulleys to reduce the amount of work necessary to leave a huge amount of weight or to lower them down. Let us now proceed with the uses of pulley. Pulleys are used in window blinds and drapery to move them up and down or back and forth. Pulleys are also used on ships to raise and lower sails. In industry, pulley is very useful because it can be used to raise and lower heavy cargo, or on cranes for use in moving construction equipment. Elevators also use pulleys to move the car up and down from floor to floor. Okay, so by this time, let us study the different types of a pulley. So, number one, we have fixed pulley. A fixed pulley is a simple type of the single pulley. 
it is passed to a support, it does not multiply the force exerted. It makes work easier by changing the direction of the force. Next, movable pulley. So this is an illustration of a movable pulley. Movable pulley is passed to the weight being lifted. It multiplies the force exerted. Black and tackle. So this is an illustration of a black and tackle pulley. A black and tackle is a combination of fixed and movable pulleys. It is usually used for raising heavy objects. Okay, children, for you to be reminded with the lesson that we have discussed, simple machines are simple tools that multiply the amount of force to make work easier. Compound machines consist of two or more simple machines. There are kinds of simple machines. So number one, we have the lever. Lever is made up of a straight rigid object like a board or a bar which pivots on a turning point called fulcrum. Levers make work easier by using leverage which multiplies the force. Next is the inclined plane. It's a simple machine that has a sloping surface. It lessens the effort exerted in transporting weight over a distance and height. Next one is a wedge. A wedge is a simple machine that consists of two inclined planes, giving it a thin end and a thick end. It is used to cut, split, tighten, hold back, and scrapping objects. Next one is the screw. The screw is really a twisted inclined plane. It allows movement from a lower position to a higher position. Screws are generally used to hold things together. Next is the wheel and an axle. It is consists of two circular pieces of different sizes attached to each other. The wheel itself is not a machine. It becomes a machine when it combines with an axle. And the last one is a pulley. A pulley is a wheel that carries a flexible rope, cord, or a belt on its rim. It is made of a wheel and a rope. Pulleys with groove rims are called shivs. And that's the end of our discussion for today. Thank you for watching. I am Sir Mar and please don't forget to share. Like and subscribe our YouTube channel and don't forget also to click the bell button to keep updated to our next lesson.